Hey, what's up, Silas here? This is something I just thought of a few days back, which is more of a combination of just uh, observing the political and social conversations that have been going on for the last couple of years, I think even the last decade, I'd say. So when you mention the high rate of male victims of violence, you will sometimes be reminded that that violence is also perpetrated by men. But if you mention the deaths caused by Muslim terrorists, you will often be reminded that more Muslims are actually killed than non-Muslims. So in that first case, it normally comes up in more like the feminist, as a feminist talking point about how, for example, they'd say that in X city, let's say they say here in Nairobi, they say, oh, in Nairobi, there's about 2,000 women attacked, violently attacked in the streets every year. So Nairobi itself is a very dangerous place for women and the society is failing women. Then if you point out that, well, actually 3,500 men are violently attacked over that same same span after that same year, somebody will say that, oh, you're just deflecting from the issue, we're still focusing on men here, and the fact that those 3,500 plus the 2,000 of the women coming up to 5,500 will still be committed by men in the majority of the time. They'll still say maybe... 5,000 out of those 5,500 attacks were committed by men, so the problem here is still men. So this is still men focusing, prob I mean, this is still an issue of men that needs to be dealt with and how they treat other people. And I completely agree with that. It should be understood why are this small percentage of men violent. But it's not necessarily just gendered, because they're not going out there saying, I am attacking this person because they're female, because they're male, especially when it comes to a situation where most of the people attacked are male. So when it comes to this situation with the Muslim situation, when you talk about the terrorist deaths, like let's say you say like in New York City this year, I think there's been what? Um, there was the attempted bombing in um, the Port Authority. There was the guy who drove his truck down a, a bike path or something. I think those are the two attacks. So you could say like, okay, let's say you just say over the last couple of years, there's been 10 or something terrorist attacks in the, in the West committed by Muslims, and about 200 people died. Then someone will say, well, over that same span, there's been 100 terrorist attacks in Muslim countries that killed 2,000 people, and we're not talking about that. We need to focus on the fact that more Muslims actually die from Muslim terrorism. So I get that. But in that case, wouldn't it still be the fact that, for some reason, a small percentage of Muslims do decide to use something in Islam, something Something about being Islamic in that situation does not discount them from committing violence. Just as these men that commit the violence, whether it's more to men or more to women, whichever part about that, they happen to be men. That definition of them being male or there's something about their maleness or their manhood that does not discount being this violent that may actually encourage them being that violent and that's what people normally do when they bring this up talking about gendered violence talking about violent men they want to see why are men why is toxic masculinity a thing that's doing this yet that same argument when it's brought up about islam they want to say no we need to focus more on the victims in this situation in the larger group of victims so don't talk about the different cultural differences the way they might be something it might be some toxic musliminity toxic Islaminity or whatever you want to call it in that, in that situation to explain why there are some people at that high rate that do decide to go out and do that. And then in both these situations, it's not a positive to say that, especially in that secondary situation, it's not a positive, it's not a defense to say that, oh, well, more Muslims are attacked, so it's not that big of an issue in the West. And they normally say this as kind of a reason to say we shouldn't be worried. People in the West shouldn't be worried. You shouldn't be worried about Muslims growing numbers, percentage of populations in different areas. But then how can you say that after stating that when there's a whole bunch of Muslims together, there happens to be a higher rate of violence in that community? That's not a positive thing to say. And um, this is about just knowing information. I get that the media covers things in different ways and is trying to sell they're, they're businesses. They're trying to get eyes there and they're trying to sell a product while they're committing this news. And there's also a situation where if you're in the West, they are going to focus on issues in the West. 
If you're in a Muslim country, they'll focus on issue as a Muslim country. If you're a Muslim in the West, you will have more of attention on what's going on to Muslims, both in your country and in other countries, because you may have relatives back there. You may be, have concern, okay, I might actually end up traveling back to Iraq for some reason. So it might matter more to you, but if somebody is in the countryside of the United States of America and they have no plan of even leaving the state, let alone going to Iraq, the chances of a station in United States of America covering a terrorist attack in 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 Iraq are a lot lower than they would. So you have to understand why things are covered this way. I also understand that the bad sticks out a lot more than more than the good, and I think it should. We should be worried when people start noticing the good things and completely ignore the bad things. But it's about the information. It's about what's covered out there. It's good to know these figures. It's good to understand these things. And some of those things are kind of obscured for political needs, for certain um, narratives that people have. And one that you recently, I think, got blown out of the water that I see this kind of effect happening again, which I think is dangerous. And I imagine a lot of people will start saying this whole thing in the next coming weeks is the Department of Justice in the United States of America just found out something like, um, I said, you said like 95% of the criminals that are not, um, of the alien criminals or people who are not American citizens and the criminals in jail were there illegally, were in the country illegally. So they're starting to find, there's an actual study on the actual rates of crimes committed by illegal immigrants. And now I just heard this, I heard this, I think it was on Tucker Carlson's show, and he had somebody come on there who was an advocate for immigrants, and he was talking about, well, you know, to, to solve this, we don't need a border wall, we don't need more stringent, we don't need that quote-unquote Muslim ban, the travel ban from those seven countries, even though those are not the most populous um, Muslim countries, even though one of the most populous Muslim countries is Indonesia, but as I mentioned this in a previous video, Asians seem to be very invisible when it comes to political um, narratives since they normally blow a lot of them out of the water. Well, um, back to the topic. So this guy was saying, instead of doing this, we need to actually get to a situation where we focus more on embracing the immigrant community since the immigrant community is the one that's harmed disproportionately by these illegal migrants because people do understand birds of a feather flock together there's segregation in communities. If you, let's say you're illegal immigrants from like Chile or something and there happens to be a small barrio, is it, would they call it barrio from Chile? Whatever. Let's say there happens to be an area in a major city in one of these quote unquote sanctuary cities that happens to have a lot of people from um, Guatemala or something. And then somebody has come in illegally from Guatemala and happens to know one or two people there somehow, chances are they will live there. Now that person has already shown that they can commit crimes because they've come into the country illegally. Now they're in that place, they're off the books and things like that. Chances are they will commit crime to the people closest to them. Similar to how if you have Muslim terrorists, if you have a, anyone in a certain group that happens to be more violent, chances are they'll lash out to the people around them. So if there happens to be a small number of Muslims that happen to have the mental condition to be violent, they will lash out around the people around them, which would be Muslims. If there happens to be some men that are violent, they will lash out around people that are familiar to them, the, the, the males around them, the people that are around them. That's why the rape culture is absurd in actual, in jails, in male jails. That's where you see the one of the true rape cultures that still exists in the West is in the prison system because you have the, some of the worst kind of men in there and they will lash out at the people around them. They're not gendered. They don't go out and say, I'm just focusing on females. Not, these are violent, violent people. Now, um, the last one, why it's going to bite these people in the butt, I think this whole idea of saying, okay, the Muslim community, I mean, the immigrant community is the one that's harmed the most. That's the saying, like, then why should we even create the conditions where you have these communities where people actually can go in there and sit in and um, embed and then become criminal? Because even if they're not just harming the, the immigrant community, they do harm other people outside the community when they go out of it. And um, yeah, so I think that's something to think of. Below, I'm going to leave links to this DOJ, Department of Justice study. You guys can check it out if I can find a cut of that um, conversation that uh, was on the Tucker Carlson show. I might include that as well. I don't know what are the links. Links to the merchandise store, of course, with uh, some gear and things there. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this whole technique, at least this whole idea with the whole thing. Do you think I'm being, um, I'm not being correct. I'm not being, I'm being, um, disingenuous or do you think I'm being dishonest 
comparing this whole situation with the males saying like, oh, we should not talk about the male situation. Yes, I know males are victimized more. I know they're victims of uh, child genital mutilation, which is the circumcision that's more to males, but that's still because it's a patriarchal society. They use that to wipe it out. But then when it's the Muslims, it's normally used to defend or to dissuade the focus on the situation, on the topic at hand, which is the high rates of um, violence from certain people in the Muslim community towards people outside of it. Hey, yeah, just one more thing. Um, what is, why are these males and why are these Muslims actually more violent? What gets them to violence? And I'm making my way through this book, this audiobook of um, the origins of war in child abuse. And it's just an excellent book that covers the reasons how somebody's childhood can embed certain, certain things into their mind that are in adulthood come out as social and personal violence. So part of this we need to understand is why do certain communities, why are men and boys treated in a certain way? Why do different cultures raise their children in a different way? And some Muslim countries, some Muslim cultures and whatnot do treat their kids in a very violent way. You see this here in um, Nairobi, Kenya where I'm at. There is a higher rate, I would say, of child abuse, actual physical hitting and different other forms. So I think this is the this is the case. This is a big part of it, and it's also going to, going to be links below to that uh, audiobook. And I'm going to do a separate video on that audiobook, kind of introing it to people and just raising the awareness and really encouraging as many people as can to make some time and actually listen to this audiobook or actually read the the free audiobook. It's it's for free, but you can gain so much from actually absorbing this information. So yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Links below. That's it for now. Goodbye.